time I talked to you about what Jesus taught regarding heaven. Today I want to talk to you about what Jesus said regarding marriage. Our text is Matthew chapter 19 verses 1 to 12. But before I get to that, a few words, a few remarks. I grew up in a world where convictions of right and wrong were your own. If I believed that marriage was for life, or if I believed that only God had the right to choose our time to die, or if I believed that Jesus was the only way to God, no one charged me with intolerance. I was not asked to approve or celebrate your choices. Rather, I was free to be my own person. In recent years, all that seems to have changed. Now, unless I march in your parade, somebody will say that I am homophobic. Homophobic means a hater of the human race, and I say, how ridiculous. The Premier of Manitoba and the MLA for Steinbeck got themselves into the news recently here in Manitoba because they did not turn up to march in a gay pride parade. I say to them, congratulations. You are not narrow-minded bigots. You are just men of personal conviction. In today's world, surely one can call for a return to sanity, a return to personal sovereignty, a return to moral freedom. Have we really lost the way of discrimination to distinguish between disagreement with a lifestyle and hate, hatred for the person. Tolerance used to mean to live and let live. Tolerance today seems to mean that I must march in your parade and approve of all your choices. My friend, that is not tolerance, that is insanity. It is the worst kind of discrimination. Shallow thinkers will tell you that I must not attempt to convert you, for that means that I am judgmental. Again, I say silliness. Perhaps I just have a better brand of honey to offer to you. Well, having said all of that, let me now go to Matthew chapter 19 and ask what Jesus our Lord taught us about marriage. I read that the Pharisees came to Jesus to ask him if divorce was still an option and he said Moses allowed you to have divorce because of the hardness of your heart. The answer that Jesus gave is as far from today's attitude to marriage and divorce as it is possible to get. Jesus said, because of the hardness of your heart, Moses allowed you to put away your wives, but from the beginning it was not so. In the beginning, Jesus said, God made them male and female. Well, what a thunderbolt that is. God made them. Not blind evolutionary forces, not sheer chance, and God made them male and female. Only two sexes, no mention of a legitimate third lifestyle, male and female, and no unisex bathrooms. Now, now you must remember that Jesus lived in a world as promiscuous as our own. The Roman world celebrated sexual diversity. Thousands of temple prostitutes plied their trade at Corinth and Ephesus. And the Caesar at Rome had a gay parade down the streets of Rome 2,000 years ago, celebrating the marriage, his marriage, to a teenage boy. In such a world, Jesus said in the beginning, God, made them male and female. Question, does anyone have the right to a same-sex union? Answer, in the beginning, God made them male and female. So what happened? Well, the early chapters of Genesis tell us what happened. Men took wives as they chose, and wives became objects and not helpmates. Jesus reminded us that marriage is not a human convenience, but a divine ordinance. He insisted on the permanence of the relationship. 
Marriage could only be broken by the infidelity of one of the contracting partners. And when that occurred, Jesus insisted that society should ostracize those people and anybody who would marry them would be guilty of a, adultery. Today we talk about irre irreconcilable differences. Jesus said nothing about that. He talked about forgiveness and uh, the grace of God. In the first 12 verses of Matthew 19, we read that God made us. We read that God made us male and female, that uh, it's not good for man to be alone. God brought Eve to Adam, and marriage is a one flesh relationship. And God said that marriage is permanent except for those who float the laws of God. Oh, how far we have come today from God's desire. And every true minister of the gospel knows what John the Baptist experienced when he was put in prison for reproving Herod for having his brother's wife. Now, before I finish, let me say this. Jesus never once suggested that anyone is beyond redemption. He taught that no sin is unpardonable but the sin of blasphemy against the Holy Ghost. He offered a new life and the water that wasn't in the well to the woman of Sychar who had six husbands. He refused to ask the death penalty for the poor woman of John chapter 8. He scorched the hypocrisy of the people wanting to stone her. He said, let him that is without sin cast the first stone. And he taught that no matter how far one has fallen, you can come back to God. Never once did Jesus indicate that the prodigal son should stay in the pig pen in the far country. Every one of us can arise and return to our Father and find forgiveness no matter where we've been, no matter what we've done. There's forgiveness with God that he might be feared. Oh, my friend, whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever your life has experience has been, I want you to know that Jesus did not come into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He doesn't condemn you. He loves you. He reaches out to you. He offers you his pardon and his peace. He offers you the gift of eternal life. He purchased that gift on the cross of Calvary. You don't have to buy it. You don't have to pay for it. You don't have to deserve it. All you have to do is come. And whosoever will may take the water of life freely.